Hello and welcome to another Talk About Games. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. This is funny, right? Yeah, this is this is fun stuff. Isn't this funny? <laughs> anyway, today we're talking about uh, Alien vs. Predator. Yes. I made him do that, by Cost- the way. Costumes. Fun. So I want to know, though. In like a couple years, will I be? Will people come up to me and say, "Hey, Mike, do be like the alien." Yeah. Or am I? Is it still going to be do Bugs Bunny? I don't know. Maybe you could be like the alien. When they ask me to do Bugs Bunny, I'm going to be like, "Yeah." Did you like my Predator voice? It was yeah, it was so good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I should have. So, I should have done the alien voice. So I played Alien. Well, the time has passed now. Maybe next oh, time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I played Alien vs. Predator for the arcade, which was a game that came out in 1994. Has nothing to do with the Super Nintendo game. I streamed that, and I streamed um, Alien. Just yeah. straight up Alien, and there's Alien vs. Predator. Yeah. yeah. So this is Alien vs. Predator. This is a beat-em-up, right? Beat-em-up beat em up arcade game. Beat-em-up arcade game. There are four different characters in the game. Mm-hmm. But I want to talk about something technically, because this game is a CPS2 game which is uh, the Capcom arcade system. And it comes in a big plastic container, and there's two boards. There's an A board and a B board. Mm -hmm. The A board has the game. So you'd have the Alien vs. Predator A board. And then the B board is the system that has the processor and all the stuff. And it's in a plastic container. In the United States, they were blue. In Japan, they're green. In South America, they were an uh, orange color. And then there's gray ones, too. Okay. Which I think were Reynolds. I'm not sure. But anyway, the blue ones are U.S., green is Japan. That's what you'll see most of the time. But that A board has two plugs on it. It has the JAMA connector that connects to every arcade machine of a certain age. But then it has this other plug that is normally called a kick harness. Right. Right? And why is it called a kick harness? Because in Street Fighter, all the kick buttons for player one and player two come off that harness. And they're like extra buttons. Yeah. They're extra buttons. Right? Because a regular arcade only has three buttons and start. Right. Right? Unless it's a Neo Geo that has the fourth button. So they needed to add more for all these fighting games. So they added these kick harnesses. Right. But you look at Alien vs. Predator, it's CPS 2. Mm-hmm. Where does the third player come? Because it's a three-player game. So it comes from a kick harness? So it comes from a different kick harness. I see. That, but it plugs it in the same plug Okay. in the system, which I think is pretty crazy. There are two other games that do that. Uh, Sh- Dungeons & Dragons, Shadows Over Mistara. Okay. And Dungeons of Dragons, Tower of Doom. Tower of Doom, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, Alien vs. Predator Arcade is related to those games. So, like, what about uh, something like, um, well, I guess it would only be, like, beat-em-ups, but I'm thinking about, like, there's, like, four players for, like, Gauntlet or something like that wouldn't need it. Oh, it would, but it would be, Gauntlet is on a different piece of arcade hardware. Okay, so it's just, yeah. Like, for instance, the Ninja Turtles, like, Ninja Turtles or, uh, X-Men. X-Men or whatever have the board itself, player one and player two, come off the edge connector mm-hmm. that has the monitor connection and the sound and I all. I guess it's different, though, because, like, Ninja Turtles, you don't need as many buttons as you would for, like, Shadows over Mistara. Because with Shadows over Mistara, you have, like, the fucking wheel and shit. So there'd be, like, more buttons. Is well, no, it's need? still only the three. It's still only the three. The three and start. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's different because the arcade hardware is different. Okay. I just think it's interesting that the plugs are on it, like you think about how does Alien vs. Predator come to arcade as a three-player, and you need that cable. If right. you don't have that cable, you can't play three-player, right? So it's like, it's probably very rare to see somebody put together a three-player Shadows over Mistaria or Alien vs. Predator. 
Anyway, this is a beat em up, but it's a late beat em up. Mm -hmm. And you really see the influence from fighting games because there are like quarter circle, like dragon punch motions. There's like a tap, tap attack. There's a lot of different attacks you can do. I don't remember it having something like that. Then the weapons, you have like some kind of like long gun thing. So, or like, I'm, I don't remember. It's so, let's, been a while. Talk, let's talk about the four characters. Yeah. There's Lynn Kurosawa, who's the girl who has the pistol mm -hmm. and she has the little sword. Sword, okay. There's Dutch, who's from the movies, obviously, right. who has a robotic arm that has a machine gun in it. And he can throw people, and he's like a big, burly guy. Right. I have to say that his animation freaks me out because he has like a very stilted animation because he walks slow. Okay. Because he's like the big character. Like you could see, like it plays. I feel like the animation plays too slow. Oh. Like there's just something There'd about be, it. Like, need to be like more frames of animation. Yeah. yeah. Then there's the Predator Warrior, who's the big, oh, that's right. big Predator. Yeah. And then there's a Predator Hunter, which is like a young Predator. Yeah. The Kurosawa and Dutch both have like a like a gun. Yeah. That they shoot as their special weapon. The Predator Warrior and Hunter both have like a shoulder mounted like fire. You gotta want to play as one of the Predators, right? Like yeah, well, I, I kind of like Kurosawa because she can do like the Chun Li like bounce on people's oh, heads. Okay. And when you're fighting it's like the big predators, you can constantly like bounce on their head. But the I mean the big aliens, aliens. but the predators have that knockdown ability that it's kind of like in Street Fighter 2 like the yoga fire type effect where all the enemies burst into flames. Yeah. And you have a gauge at the bottom of the screen that will um when you do the special weapon, either the pistol or the shoulder flame thing, the gauge goes down. Okay. But then there are special situations where you get like unlimited cooling where it the gauge doesn't go down and you could just spam it and just destroy everything. What are the two uh the alien or I'm sorry, what are the predators like specials? So the the predator warrior has a spear and he has the shoulder mounted fire thing. I think I'm, I think when I played, I was the predator with the spear. The predator hunter has like a, it, it's like a glaive. It has like a sharp. It's not just like a tip of a spear. Yeah. It's more like a slashing spear. I say. And uh, they have the same shoulder mounted flame thing. Okay. Now enemies are constantly dropping guns. That's the other thing. This is a beat 'em up where you know, like you're playing Final Fight, you're playing Turtles. Maybe like one item drops. Like per screen. Yeah. In this, because it's running like this powerful arcade hardware, like there could be 50 knives on the ground. Right. There could be like pulse rifles. That's cool. There could be like, so you're constantly picking up guns. I remember when you did a Robocop 2. Yeah. It was like you you would get the extra gun, but it would only last for like two seconds. Yeah. Right? Like, does, is this like when you get an extra weapon, do you keep it for a while? Uh, you keep it about as long as RoboCop, okay. but in RoboCop, there might only be two or three per level, and in this, there'll be like 10 on the ground. Oh, okay. Right? Uh, so you do get more because there are more. Yeah. Okay. But you're constantly switching. It's like, if you had a gun, you'd be like, bam, bam, bam. Oh. Pick up another. Pick up another okay. one. Right? So you're always having guns. The jump attacks, and the, there, there's you have a lot of mobility, but one criticism I have of this game is all the enemies are very samey. It's like, oh, it's a purple alien. Oh, it's a little alien. Oh, it's a big alien. It's like the turtles in time. It's like they're all foot soldiers. Here comes the yellow foot sol soldier. Yeah. Here's a guy with right. a knife. Right. Here's a, here's like a Waylon. There's all these like Waylon Yutani guys you got to fight. Beat em ups in general are do that a lot, where it's a lot of the same enemies. Right. This game tries to have a story, but it's like, right. It's like, come on, man. So the predators came to Earth to hunt the. Uh, queen that is in California, mm -hmm. right? So, like, when you're on the attract screen, it's like they're that you're like seeing like the predator's view of like tracking California, yeah. And they like zooms in like their computers, yeah. And they're like, we got to go there, and this is the story, yeah, yeah. So the predators come and they meet and they respect Dutch and Kurosawa because they're like cybernetic and they fought the aliens. Before. Right. So they're like, oh, you you guys are good. So we're not going to mess with you. Right. But they're like 
kill all the Whalen yutani guys, get them all. So you go, you fight to the end, you find the queen. The first queen you fight, you fight two queens in this oh, game. Wow. But the first queen you fight is at the end of stage four. And after that, they're like, oh, well, General Bush, uh, actually, Whalen yutani is using the aliens to make weapons to kill the predators. Okay. So then after that, you stop fighting aliens as much, although there's a lot of aliens, and you start fighting the Whalen yutani guys with the guns. So that's the last two levels. There's a level where there's a shooter level that's like a bonus level. Level three is you your gun doesn't run out. When you say slice shooter levels, that like you're shooting into the background. So you're like, like one sitting of on an APC that's driving. Yeah. And it's like it feels like a Sunset Riders horse level. One of the okay. But you don't move around. You're just hanging on the top of it and you gotta shoot down and up. Okay. And you never run out of bullets. Okay. Right? Where normally you have the gauge. Um, but that level's really easy. This game, as far as beat-em-ups go, you have so many attacks, like you do a slide, you have so many things you can do, but it... Is there a melee? Yeah, oh, it's all, it's mostly melee. Oh, mostly melee. Yeah. You, like, you, you ha everybody starts with a weapon, it's like, there's a lot of complexity. Okay. But I feel like the complexity is kind of wasted. The complexity is wasted because all the enemies you're fighting have, like, very basic attacks. Like, it's almost better, like, if you're playing as a predator, to just do normal attacks. The aliens not really defend themselves that well. No, I mean, there's just a lot. Right. Like, the the way this game works is they're, they're like, we have this, this great arcade hardware, so we're going to put so much shit on screen. Oh, there's, like, 20 guys on screen, like, more than any other fighting game. You know, any other beat-em-up. There's just enemies. That's how they're trying to impress you. Because they knew they could do it. But the problem is you're just mowing them down, mm. right? And if you manage your gauge and manage your special attack, you can just sit there and just spam. It's not... As you get boring. Cause that. Like, I was, like, trying to do cool attacks and, like, pick up guns and, like, yeah. play it. Right. But, like, the way you should play this game is you just sit there... You stay away from the enemies. Your gauge goes up. You do the fire. You do the fire. Oh, your gauge goes up. You do the fire. You only ever play as the predator warrior. You stab them from far away. Because beat em ups are two different things when you're continually popping in, uh, I guess, in real life quarters. But uh, yeah. if you're playing in MAME, you're just like, you know, pumping in a million things. And then you just go through the whole thing. It's boring, like Simpsons or Turtles or any of this stuff. But if you're actually playing and you're trying to like, not use many credits, it become they become more interesting at that point. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I think that this game, like, if I was going to run, you, you know, it sounds like I don't like this game. I do like this game. If I was going to become an expert at a beat em up, it might be this one. Okay. Because be of all the moves? Because of all the moves. And because it's 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 interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it. The only problem is that all the enemies look the same. Yeah. Um, there is one enemy in this game that really annoys the hell out of me. Who's that? Right? And those enemies are are the, the chest bursters. Oh. Because you'll be sitting there and you'll be sitting there and they're little. You can't punch above because they're like crawling on the ground. So you're sitting there and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And they're like, they're like coming at you like, <laughs> they're like coming at you like all Fucker. over. Oh. Right? <laughs> you know? Like that's exactly what it's like. You know? Can I do the rest of the video like that? <laughs> yeah. But th th that's exactly what they're like. And they're just coming at you. Right. And you got to do like, Specific attacks, and they like don't jump at you right away. They wait a little bit. They're like, "Now I'm gonna jump." Okay, okay. But and they're and they're all like, so the timing on them is a little. Yeah, and then off. they hook on to you, and you have to like. Most of the time, what do you do? You like tap to get them off or something? Yeah, yeah, but 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 most of the time, you're gonna do the button where you where you hit down the two buttons and do your like desperation attack mm -hmm. that takes your health. Mm -hmm. So not only do you take the health damage of them hanging on you, but you take the health damage to get them off to get them off. And I'm like, oh. 
And that's where they make their money off of your quarters. Right? <laughs> right. Because, and on the last level, you walk into a room and you're like, fuck this. Like, so I want to hear about the, uh, I mean, I have played this before, but I just don't remember. So tell me about the final boss. So the final boss is literally the boss from the, the boss from level four, but a little darker blue. <laughs> but the final alien will like hang on the, she has more moves. Okay. She'll like hang on this bar and then drop fire down on you. So you need to like get out of the way. And she's constantly like jumping up into the background. Right. Whereas the first one you fight in level four doesn't do that. Is it annoying? It's like I can't consistently dodge it. Mm hmm. Like sometimes the fire, I, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes I'll jump and it won't hit me, and sometimes I'll jump and it'll just hit me. So right, right. I don't know necessarily where I'm supposed to stand to do that. Yeah. So and, would you play through the game with all four characters? I was like switching between. Oh, because like when you die, you pop you on could switch. One, right? yeah. yeah. Um, I think the Predator Hunter, which is like the young Predator, is the coolest one because they're faster than the predator warrior mm -hmm. and the extra damage doesn't really matter because they have the same special attack okay right so i think the predator hunter which is the orange one is is probably the cool one the power loader fight so at the end of level five you fight a power loader yeah and then it's one of those things by the time you get to level seven there's like a power loader on every screen right, right? and they're they're like tough because your special attacks don't knock them over so how do you handle it? You have to hit them and stay away, and then they do this, like, where they attack with the hands, like that. So like a back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So you need to, like, kite them around the map. I see. While you're fighting other people that you do normal attacks on, and they fall down. That's cool. So that one's tough. This game, I, I just read this on Wikipedia, to be honest, but this game almost became a 32X game. Oh, that would be cool. But the 32X got canceled before it was could, able to happen. It, it yeah. was able to happen. It's, it's a shame with some of the games. There's like the Bucky O'Hare arcade game. There's the, um, I, I just thought of another one. Um, I mean, well, there's like, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ninja Baseball Batman. Yeah. And there, there's a, oh, the Battletoads arcade. Some of these, like re this one, th there's all these like really cool beat em up arcade games that we didn't get ports of. Simpsons. Yeah. Well, I guess it was ported to Xbox live arcade but i don't know that that counts i mean like a super nintendo right. versions you know yeah not like an emulated like yeah. hang on 20 yeah. years later right exactly yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah so it's a good game there's a lot to it there's not as much to it as the D, &D games mm. so you don't have like the spells and the inventory and all the that's what i always said the way i like those ones so much because yeah. I, like i get bored with these games but um that me getting bored with these games is also partially my own fault because a lot of times i am just pumping in credits or quarters yeah. and just going through it and that's not really what you should do it should be like okay i'm gonna give myself uh three quarters and that's all I get. And so let's see how far I can get. And keep doing it only on the three chord. And then that's how you get really better at it and how you make these games more interesting. And I, ne I need to start doing that myself. I started doing that with shmups. Yeah. But I've never really done it that much with beat em ups. I don't know why I should. The only thing I'm afraid of is is the best strategy for this game, like that like rinse and repeat special attack. Like very boring, very basic. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm curious what the strats are mm -hmm. because there is a video on youtube that's a uh like no death no no damage it might even be damageless run of this game right. and i'm like, like how do people do i that? can't even I imagine it's crazy that's what that's what exactly what i mean like how the fuck do people do these things it's like final fight no damage or like yeah you know it's any like, of these games it's like okay final fight no damage how do you fight that fucking samurai guy in the ring where he just charges at you and you can't. But there, but people do it, and there's so there's a way. Like yeah. people figure it out, you know. Yeah, and that's, that's where these games are interesting. Right, but I mean, it's it's a lot of it's like I said, I feel the same way about this as I felt about Metal Slug. I didn't truly play Metal Slug until this year because I was trying to get to the point where I was like one crediting it exactly. Right, 
And Metal Slug is a different game mm -hmm. when you have to try to one credit it. Exactly. When you only have so many. Because when you're pumping quarters in, you get grenades on every life. Mm -hmm. You get the heavy machine gun. Every life. You get all of that. Right? So you always have grenades. When you're trying to do it on one credit, you need to save those fucking grenades. And every time the girl comes by that's like tiptoeing, right. you want to like get more bombs. Yeah. Because you need them. This game is like that too. Because when you die and you come back, the super thing that makes you have no heat gauge yeah. sometimes appears when you die. I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what's kept a lot of these games like interesting throughout the years. Because if we all just played all these games with continually pumping in credits, like it wouldn't be interesting. But it's all these like sort of challenges of doing it one CC and everything that you know keeps people coming back. Yeah. So I mean, Alien vs Predator. It's amazing pixel art. It is a little muted. It is a little gray. One other thing about this game: this game has nothing to do with the Alien vs Predator movie. That came out in 2004. It was pr prior to that, wasn't it? This came out in 1994. Yeah, yeah. Ten years before. Right. But apparently, the movie, this game was supposed to be a movie tie-in to a script that didn't get made. I see. And it is a comic tie-in, right? Oh, there's a comic of it from 1994? Yeah. Ah. Because I remember seeing Alien vs. Predator stuff for years and years and years. I'm like... What's this Alien vs. Predator? What is this? I know Alien. Yeah. I know Predator. Where's the movie? Right. What's well, Alien vs. Predator? And it didn't come out until 2004. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I was in see. college in 2004, and I was hearing about Alien vs. Predator right. for 10 years. Because there was comics. There was Yeah, but I never- I think I remember seeing those comics back then, and I'm pretty sure they were like- I, I liked it because it was- uh, they were like kind of gory. Yeah. And, uh, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean- it, it's it's cool stuff from a cool time. I know that the movies have kind of soured people to uh, the idea of to it idea. because they weren't didn't go over well, right? right. Yeah. But I think we're getting a new one. Yeah, it, yeah. it's a great idea if they, if it was done really well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. hopefully they figure that out. It'd be funny to have a new game, a new uh, Alien vs Predator. Alien Predator. They, yeah. they could do it. Okay, so there you go. So let's take this game. What would you do to it that you think could improve it? Th this this version of it. I mean, you already said that you like it, but yeah, they do I I think that there's times where they just throw aliens, like a ton of aliens, at the screen mm -hmm. for no reason. That's rough. I think so many aliens in this game and so many people in this game just walk in from the left or right. Why aren't they like coming from the background oh, yeah. or like dropping down, right, or whatever? Um. You know, we have these characters that have this crazy ability set, but literally they just walk right or they're on an elevator or something. Like Dutch can't even jump. Right. Because his jump is like a bear hug attack kind with his like, those, yeah, like like that. Yeah. Speaking of bear hug attacks in games, I, I was playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 recently and I love Zangief. Yeah. I was never a Zangief person, but now that I can do the the 360 yeah. consistently... He's better to play as now because I can I can throw out the the spinning pile driver. Who are, you, who are you normally in that game? Yeah, um, I like Strider Hero because he has the launchers. Yeah, I like I'm a, I'm like a scrub man. I like Cable because he's easy because mm -hmm. he does like the Viper Beam and stuff like that. Wolverine Ryu. I don't know. I don't like like high tier characters. Okay. I'm not doing like an M Bison Sentinel. Like I you see. know, right. I'm not plugged into it. But well, I'm I'm definitely you're more than me. So yeah, you know. but but I mean that that game. I yeah, I was I I was playing as Zangief, and I'm like, you know, nobody ever plays as him. Yeah. But his like spinning like the lariat yeah. like that is so cool in that game, and he could do it in the air. That he could do the spinning thing like as he's coming down at people. Be a Zangief player. Yeah. Master. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, because Russia's so fashionable nowadays. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? No, but I, I, I like him. Um, yeah, th this game definitely, there's no way for the characters to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no assist attacks. Like, you know how, like, Marge and 
and Homer can like do the spin. Oh right, and stuff like that. Yeah, there's none of that. I was playing that recently. She, you know, speaking of uh, interesting move sets and whatever, uh, Marge in that game, uh, one of her main moves is that she like swings her ass. At yeah, people. she you jumps in the air. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I I spend so much time for that for that move to come out consistently. Those buttons need to be crisp. Yeah. Because you want it to be where, like, if you go like this, she it, does it. That. Happens. She does it. Yeah. Right? Why was you hitting it and it was not doing that? Like, if you... For clarification, he has the machine. Yeah. Um, if you have, like, the shitty switches that came with it... Yeah. There'll be different heights or the rubber will be worn away oh, differently. and then you can't do it. And then you can't do it. Oh, that sucks. So you need, like, clicky, like... Like gamer keyboard right. switches. Because then you could just, and it happens. Did you fix it now? I did. Okay. I have it to the point where you just, you just, yeah. And it comes out. Who do you, you like to use in Simpsons? Um, Does anybody play as Lisa? I've been playing as Homer a lot yeah. because my Homer was the most fucked up. Uh, so, so okay, because of the fact you fixed it, yeah. you're, you're like happy that you fixed it. Right? Yeah, that's right. funny. Right. You know, right? You're like, I fixed this. Shit. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So, funny. but that was the one I had to spend the most time with. So, because I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there with him, and I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> right, right, right. You just wanted to see what your handiwork in <laughs> yeah, motion, right? I, I brought my, I brought my daughter in, and my my son, and my son's like, yeah, dad, I'll help you do the thing. Yeah. And he's sitting there, and he's like, he'd play it for. 10 hours if I needed him mm -hmm. but I needed her and she's sitting there and she's like I'm like could you like she did she not like it I, I'm like I just need you to play through the first level and let me know if the buttons work and she's like oh, fine she does it we get to the end I'm like okay thanks and she like runs to do anything else but your son is into it yeah but he's like yo what can I do what can I do oh I have him to the point where he does will. She get... like games though. Like she does. She plays Splatoon. She plays Smash. She plays Roblox. So it's not that she's not into video games. It's just she doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, Simpsons. Oh. Right. That's great. Great. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But yeah, I'm not. You know what? I'm not interested in every game either. So, right. I mean. Yeah. You know. So we got it done. Yeah. That one's away in Magic Too Many Games land. But I want an Alien vs. Predator now because I enjoyed playing this. That would be cool. Yeah. It's a good, good game. It's um, a good game. So speaking of arcades, I'm going to be talking about Pac-Man Museum Plus for the Nintendo Switch, which is yeah. a new uh, Switch game that came out. I got advertised this game mm -hmm. so fucking much. How so? I could not escape this game. Mm -hmm. I'm like on Twitter. I'm like, oh, what's going on, on Twitter? Ad. Mm, I'm like uh, on. Mm -hmm. I'm on YouTube. Ad. Right. I'm on everywhere. Every did fucking it, does thing. Does that make you want to not look at it? No, I, I'm just like I must have like a lot of like arcadey things in my search history yeah, right because they like attacked me i mean you do yeah i'm sure it's all like, you do is arcade stuff like i couldn't escape this game <laughs> this game's like i'm gonna fucking find you You like pac-man motherfucker right. well here it is here's Pac Man. here's fucking pac-man what do you want i'm like but i have pac-man games that aren't in here you're like but i have oh because you, <laughs> you, you have a miss pac-man machine and yeah. junior pac-man yeah, right and i'm like I had a Miss Pac-Man machine, but mine was fucked up. The monitor was all fucked up. Like, why don't you get that? Like, I get they want to make money and they want to do things, but like... We're going to talk about it. Go ahead. So I got the whole thing. All right, do it. He, he's going to talk about the game. So I got like a bunch of notes here. I'm going to be looking at my notes. Two pages. Bit. This is a two-pager, everybody. No, it's one, two... Oh, shit. Three, four... It's four pages. Four pages of... Pack notes. All right. So first of all, I want to talk about the history of it so that people like have a frame of reference. Yep. So, okay. So Bandai Namco made Pac-Man in 1980. Yeah. Uh, it was popular, so they wanted to have a sequel. Midway helped distribute the original Pac-Man machine. And you have an original Pac-Man yeah, machine? I do. You have Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, right? My junior Pac-Man machine is actually an original Pac-Man machine with the okay. with the junior Pac-Man stickers on it. And you have, on it. You have junior Pac-Man. So you have three. Yeah. Okay. Also, another thing. So some, might, some people might be like, but I thought 
Atari made Pac-Man because when we were growing up in the 80s and 90s, when we're at home, our Super Nintendo games or whatever, our Atari games that we had and all that stuff, it always said Atari, Pac-Man or whatever. But that's what we had at home because they did the home ports. Namco made Pac-Man. Yes. So let's just, you know, clear that up. So because some people might be in the comments and be like, wait, I thought Atari, you know, did Pac-Man. It's, it's Namco did Pac-Man. Yes. Um, so this was the era of arcade machines. You have these big, heavy, coin-op, wooden machines. Ryan's got many of them. How many do you have now? 47. Fucking 47. That's insane. <laughs> so and uh, so, if a game didn't sell at... Let's say a game wasn't popular in the arcades. They have, they have this machine sitting there. It's in a pizzeria. It's in an arcade. And the game sucks, and nobody's playing it. Now the people are like, we have this big, heavy thing, and nobody's going over and playing it. It's a it. piece of furniture. It's a piece of furniture at that point. Nobody fucking cares. So what happens, or what happened back then at least, is these other companies would come in, and they would be like, we are going to change that machine from this the game that nobody's playing into something that people will play. So that's where, uh, and they're called uh, con uh, conversion kits or whatever. Uh, yeah. So one of those was... Or field kits. Okay. I haven't heard that term. Yeah. Um, so... Um, one of the companies companies that did the conversion kits uh, was called GCC, General Computer Corporation. So General Computer Corporation was trying to make an improved version of Pac-Man that was called Crazy Auto. Uh, they ended up selling Crazy Auto over to Midway, and Midway wanted it because they knew that the, it could be sold as a future Pac-Man game. Okay. And that's when Bally Midway made Miss Pac-Man. So really, this GCC Corporation kind of hacked. They sort of hacked the original Pac-Man yeah. to like improve improve it. And that's where you, you know that's and this whole situation here, happens. Here's the yeah. here's the dirty secret at the time. All of these boards that we're talking about, Pac-Man's, yeah. all of them have like a million bootlegs. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the data for the games is just sitting on the little chips. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the chips are hard to get to. Right. You don't even need a tool to pop them out. Yeah. And you can literally pop them out of the board. So it's easy to... And read them. Right. And then you know. Right. So they were sitting there and they're like, okay, there's there's six chips in a Pac-Man. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, now they're, they're over here. Because they're already this arcade conversion company. They're looking at these chips and they're like, all right, so we could take Pac-Man and we could, like, what's wrong with the game? This is wrong. This is wrong. Let's let's fix it. And then we'll resell it. And then, yeah, you, yeah that, so that whole situation happened. So Miss Pac-Man was 1982. Again, reg, regular Pac-Man's 1980. So Namco finally, so and that was January 1982, Miss Pac-Man came out. So now you come months and months and months later, you get to September. Namco is like, okay, but we didn't actually do that. We're going to make it from our ground up. We're going to make the real sequel. Mm -hmm. By that point, it was almost too late because Miss Pac-Man was so fucking popular. And, you know, one of the most popular games ever, Miss Pac-Man, yeah. you know? you Anywhere you go, it's like a Miss Pac-Man Galaga machine. It is know? crazy. It is crazy that Midway got away with this. Mm -hmm. And to this day, it's still a problem. It's still fucked up, and we're going to talk about that. <laughs> so Namco, it was still 1982. Namco did their own sequel to Pac-Man. So it's like the true sequel to Pac-Man is actually Super Pac-Man. Yeah. And Super Pac-Man is actually a really interesting game in, in its own right. It's a game where you get keys to unlock doors, and uh, you get little green um power pellets that turn pac-man huge so that you can go through ghosts that doesn't kill them there's still the regular power pellets that you can actually kill the ghosts and whatnot and it's a that's a great game in its own right um and it's actually kind of a little bit more interesting than P miss pac-man is it, uh, like honestly it's probably a more interesting game i love miss pac-man but it's like there's more going yeah. on in super pac-man anyway so and then after that bally did uh, baby pac-man as well now baby pac-man was half um, arcade machine and then half pinball machine and I almost wonder if they did that because it would be like a harder thing to copy you know well they're also a pinball company and they're also a pinball company I think they just probably did it because they thought it was neat and yeah it's, you know, one of the, I think the only time they ever tried anything like that it's just a neat idea yeah. I played I played that there's this place called Deezerland in uh, Orlando mm -hmm. where it has the Orlando car museums there and there's an arcade, but they have a pinball parlor in the back. Mm -hmm. And I played that. 
It was right. one of the machines they had also, a by couple the way, weeks ago. Um, that's really cool. I've played it before, too. Um, some people might, like, yell at us about this. If I get any of this information wrong, I'm sorry, but, like, this is just what I know. And if I am wrong, please leave us a comment, like, and let me know where I'm wrong. Because yeah. I might be wrong on some of these things. But um, so then GCC did Junior Pac-Man. So that was also not Namco. And yeah. Namco, I guess people, that game... Has Junior Pac Man has never had the best reputation as far as like gameplay goes. I think it's fine. I pref- so I have played the arcade game. They ported it to the twenty six hundred, and I actually like that a little bit better because the the screen scrolls in the Atari twenty six hundred version like vertically, and it also moves like really really fast. It's really hard. So I I like the Junior Pac Man on Atari a lot. I like it more than the arcade version. But the arcade version. I, I like the arcade version. I think it's fine, but a lot of people don't like it. They don't like the scrolling screen, I guess, and that you can't see the whole screen. It, it's hard. It's you can't see the whole screen. There's just so many, so many pellets. To get. And it's so hard to get the ghosts to group. Yeah. To be able to get the pellet and- And get all the ghosts. Get all the yeah. ghosts. It's hard. You're right. Yeah. So I don't hate it, but it's, it's probably not the best. Um, But you know what this also reminded me of? Like, you got to remember, so with some of these games- like Bally is like working with GCC back then. Like if you like, so on the, like say like the junior Pac-Man marquee and all that, it still says Bally Midway. Yeah. So they're working with this company at that time. It almost reminds me of the relationship. Here's my Zelda reference. When Nintendo was working with Capcom and they were doing the Oracle games and Minish Cap and all that, they were just, it was another company because Pac-Man was so popular. They needed, help at the time and they're like we need more pac-man shit so they're like i think the only reason they got away with it because namco's over in japan right and and then that and then midway's here helping to put out the machines and they needed somebody else to work with that's in states i guess they didn't have like a you know somebody here anyway so that's some of the history behind it and um i know i didn't even get into talking about the switch game and all that but we'll we'll get into it so i'm gonna keep going with this though so as the pac-man games are released digitally GCC wanted to be paid. Yeah. So um, now we're going to like modern now times. Now that was the old stuff. Now we're going to modern times. They want their want their fucking money because they own part of it. Yeah. So legally, so GCC want, wants the money for any of the digital downloads containing Mrs. Pac-Man. So that's why this collection doesn't have Miss Pac-Man or you know Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness and all this other stuff aren't on this collection. So GCC and Bandai. You know, we're going to uh, Namco, we're going to Bandai Namco, we're going to work out a deal. And this is around 2019 or so. And then what happened is as they're like about to work out a deal at games swoops in and they're like, we want to make a mini cabinet for Miss Pac-Man and they buy it. And then Namco's like, the fuck. Right. Right. So then they had a lawsuit. This is like 2020 now. Now we're coming into recent times. Yeah, yeah. This shit's still going on. <laughs> and it's still going on. Yeah. Um, so now they're like, no, this is bullshit. We were going to finally own Miss Pac-Man. This is all going to be over. And then so at games, like basically they own own it now. So I think there was like a Pac-Man anniversary and all this. And they're like, all right, we're going to put out this this collection of Pac-Man games on the Switch. But... We wanna we wanna include Miss Pac-Man and all that. So this big lawsuit happens, and we know, the details of it aren't even out there, so we don't even know exactly what happened. But we do know that Mrs. Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man is not on the game, so obviously it didn't work out very well because right. Miss Pac-Man's not on it. So what they did instead of giving at games money, they were like, we're gonna change the names because whatever. So because some of the games like Pac Land has Miss Pac-Man in it for like a second. So they change her to Pac-Mom. So when you see her, she's like dressed a little differently. It's just like just enough for them to get away with it. But they shouldn't have to get away with anything because it's fucking Namco. They made Pac-Man. It's like, that's their shit. Right. So if I were them, I would feel the same way. I'd be like, I'm not giving... So they could have paid at games and they right. could have been like, okay, we'll pay you at games and then then we'll be able to put Miss Pac-Man in the game. But... Then they're they're like we are Pac Man is our thing. We're not paying you to put Pac. No, because this is the equivalent of if if you know Warner Brothers made a Minnie Mouse cartoon before there was a Minnie Mouse. Well, I mean, now we can get into how Universal stole 
Oswald, the lucky rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the better example. Right. Um, you know, the original creation before Mickey Mouse was Oswald. And then Universal, Walter Lance and all that came in, stole it, and they started making Oswald. There's Universal Oswald cartoons. Yeah. That you can, you know, and that's a, that's another whole thing. But, but, but like, it's, it's yeah. insane. Like, this is something that should be fixed. Oh, it should have been fixed along. It should have been, this should have been fixed in the 80s. Yeah. But they, like, sat on it or whatever. So, at this point, it's like, I want, the thing is, is like, you'd be like, you know what, Namco, just fucking just get it over with. Just pay the fucking at games and then you own it forever and just be done with this. Wash your hands of it, right? Yeah. But you don't know how much at games wants. And they're probably like, one billion dollars. Right. They're like, whatever. They're like, we don't. Okay, so you you're telling us we're gonna put out a collection next year or something on the Switch, and so it, it can include Miss Pac Man Maze Madness and Pac Man Rally or something, just so that we can do that. And you want like a hundred billion majillion dollars or however much they probably right. ask for, and they're well, like, the we other, can't make that money back. The other thing is, what did at game? What does at games have going on? They wanted to make a mini cabinet. That's great, right? You know who should have made that mini cabinet? Namco. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And At Games, by the way, also made a bunch of those like shitty consoles. Yeah. With those, they, they made this shitty one. It's like the Sega Genesis thing, and it has like the infrared controller, which and is it's fucking like, trash. Pl the plastic is like brittle, and it's like. It's fucking trash. It's awful. And now they own Miss Pac Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> um, so, anyway, let's get into talking about this actual collection, though. So, this actual collection. Um, so there's the, the there is this problem that you know you can't have any of the Miss Pac-Man games, but I want to talk about uh, the games it does have. Game, we're going to talk about the games it does have and the games it doesn't have. So first of all, the games that it does not have. Okay. Okay. So the Pac-Man Atari games, like the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, Seventy Eight Hundred, the Atari computers. Yeah. All that, none of that. But there is a background. There is like a you can make a wallpaper that's like the Twenty Six Hundred background. But you might be like, well, why would I even want that? Because it's fucking everybody had it. Right. It's you know, yeah, it's maybe not the best game or the best port, but it should if you're gonna have a collection of Pac-Man games, it, that's iconic even if it's not good. Right. It should be on it. Junior Pac-Man for Atari is is a really good game. That's not on here, but we know we just discussed why that can't be on there. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness on uh, Nintendo 64 is not on it. Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures, which that game's crap, but still. Um Pac-Man World, Pac-Man Rally. These are all games not on it. Pac-Man yeah. Fever, which was on GameCube. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, which that's was on, based on the cartoon. Yes, that was uh, th on the 360, PS3, Wii U, 3DS. By the way, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures was just trending all over Twitter the other day. I don't know why. Probably just because people were memeing it or whatever. Right. It's kind of interesting. But I almost, I, I was like, is this like, are the, is Namco somehow doing this on purpose so that like they can sell more copies of this Switch <laughs> game? I always like wonder about Switch shit like that. Um, but. Uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 is not on it. The first one is, but 2 is not. Pac-Man 99 is not on it. Pac-Man, none of the like Commodore 64 old computer versions, none of that is on it. Baby Pac-Man is not on it. So that's all, everything is not on it. So there are a bunch of games that are not on it. But let's now talk about the games that are on it. You get Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, which Pac-Mania was the one that I played uh, at my old grocery store when I was a kid. It's the one that's like Legos and all yeah. that. And it's, it's got the marquee that's like the pop-out molded marquee where Pac-Man's like coming out of it. It's, it's interesting. Pac and Pal. Uh, Pac-Man Arrangement. Pac-Man Arrangement CS, which is the PSP game. So I wonder how many PSP games have been ported to the Switch. How many PSP games have been ported in general? Right. But... So that's a PSP game that's been supported to the Switch now. Interesting. Pac-Man Championship Edition, the first one, not the second one for some reason. Pac-Man Battle Royale, which is only really fun in the arcades. Playing it on this is weird because yeah. like you got to play that game with friends. Pac-Man 256, which I love. It's one of my favorites. Pac-Land, uh, and that's the one where they have Pac-Mom in it. Pac-Attack, which fucking... Uh, that's like Tetris. It's bad. Yeah. That's a Super Nintendo game. Um, Pac-and-Roll Remix. And then Pac Moto. Those were two Wii games. So Pac, Pac and Roll. It's like you're rolling around. And Pac Man's like a circle. Yeah. I get why they want him to be like. like it's like Monkey Ball. Shit. It's like if Monkey Ball was shit. <laughs> um, this actually, is the Mike review. This is well, well, Pac and Roll Remix. 
it's okay. Yeah. But it's not monkey ball. Um, pack attack. Uh, pack attack. That was the. <laughs> That was the te- so Ryan and I had a Vine <laughs> a long time ago, and we did this video. You guys remember Vine? Yeah, we did the video. What was the video? It was like we we were we were saying all the Pac Man games. Like like he but you had, have to remember Vine was like pre TikTok, so it was like. But you gotta remember, it was so like a ten second video. So we're in his apartment, and he has all of the Pac Man. Back when games, I used to live in an apartment, right? Yeah, he has all the Pac Man games, and he gets them in a pile. And like in Vine, you like press the button and it records. Yeah. And then you press the button and then you let go. And then you only have a certain amount of time. So you can press the button. So he's like, Pac Man, Miss Pac Man. Yeah. And he went through like every, every single every one. Pac-Man, that was, that every was single Pac Man. So the Vine was just like, Pac Man, Junior Pac Man, Miss Pac Man. I feel like I'm doing a remake of that. Yeah. Right. right. So, um, Pac Motos, which is. Same kind of thing. You're like rolling around, but you're on platforms in the sky, and you're like knocking each other off the platform. That's that one. And then Pack in Time, which is another. It's like a Sonic the Hedgehog wannabe. It's on Super Nintendo. It sucks. Yeah, it fucking sucks. You have like items, and it's it's. I We're don't like going Pack in that, Time. There's gonna be a guy. Nee, it's the best Super Nintendo game. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Some of these games are great. So Super Pac Man. Um, I love Super Pac-Man. We already talked about that. Pac-Mania. I don't really like Pac-Mania that much, even though I'm nostalgic for it, but it's very slow. It might get faster. Would you rather play Pac-Mania or Tasmania on Genesis? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I th- so the Genesis and the Super Nintendo one are different the, yeah. as far as Tasmania goes. The Super Nintendo one is the one where you're just running down the road. And yeah. It's fucking awful. Yeah. The Tasmania that's on Genesis is actually pretty good. Yeah. And there's like a, like the Taz and Mars or whatever. That yeah. game's actually not bad. I like Tasmania on Genesis. Yeah, the Genesis ones are. Yeah. So then there's uh, Pac and Pal. That one was Japan only. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the idea of Pac and Pal is Pac-Man's going around and there's cards laying all over the place. You pass by the card and when you pass by a card, it opens a door, and then you can go in the door, and the, it, there might be a cherry, and then you got to go get the cherry. But uh-oh, your little green person, which is her name was Miru, she runs and she grabs the cherry, and she's going to bring it back to where the ghosts spawn. So you got to get it from her first so that you can get the points. She's not a pal. She's not at all, really. She actually sucks. Yeah. She's more of a villain. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's always, like, fucking you up, basically. And then there's also the ghosts. So you're so you're passing by the cards and all this. But what's interesting about that game? There's also Rally X and Galaga tie-in or Galaxian tie-in, where some of the items that you get, you flip a card and it might be a Galaga card yeah. or Galaxian. You flip it and then you get an item and then Pac-Man turns blue, and he can shoot fucking laser beams and shit. So. Um, so the ghosts come and you're like, Aah! and like fucking shoot all these fucking laser beams, and then they're they're like stunned, and then you then you can get by them or whatever, and the, but you get points from doing that. So it's not like you get the power pellets; it's like you're shooting them with like laser beams yeah. and shit. Then when you get to the next stage, then it's like Rally X, and instead of that, you get the little Rally X car, and then Pac Man shoots smoke out of his mouth, yeah, and the smoke comes out, which lingers on the screen, and then if the ghosts run into that, they get like stunned, and that's how that works. And but the Miru character fucking uh, is really annoying. They didn't bring the game to the United States, but they were going to because there was a Pac Man cartoon, yeah, in the early '80s. And what happened is people didn't really like the Pac-Man cartoon very well. It was Hanna-Barbera Pac-Man cartoon. So because of the fact that I think that cartoon didn't do super hot, what what they so in that cartoon there was Pac-Man and his wife and they had a baby and they had a dog. And the dog's name was Chomp Chomp. And they were going to bring it over to the United States and there was going to be a cabinet in the U.S. And Miru, the little green girl going around taking your shit that sucks – she was going to be Chomp Chomp, and the game was going to be called Pac-Man and Chomp Chomp, but they never did it. So that's like kind of the lost Pac-Man yeah. game. Um, so there's that game. You get that. And I think that's a pretty interesting game. And I, I, you know, So there's a whole collection here of games that are good. The emulation's good. They did a nice job on it. And like when you're playing Pac-Man, it's got the bezel for the actual arcade. And I like checked it side by side for like all the games, and it's like... It's what you would want if you're going to do. Yeah. Because some of these fucking collections, I'll give you an example. 
uh, the Xbox like 360 one. It's yeah. like you're playing Miss Pac-Man or you're playing some of these things, and they have these weird backgrounds that you're like, this is this doesn't look like the arcade machine. So they actually like made it look like the real machines and all that. So that was really nice. It's just a shame that they weren't able to, um, you know, get every game on here like I'd mentioned, but. One of the things that there's all these unlockables you can do. So like you play Pac-Man and they play it for a little while and you get like points and coins and whatever. And you can go to a Gashapon machine and then you can get this is like the modern. Shit. Yeah. So you can get like the Gashapon. Figure. Oh, it's like, oh, I got Pac-Man or I got like I got like a golden Pac-Man. There's all that. You, you can do that if you want. And you can decorate the room. And I don't care about any of that. I wish instead of all this cosmetic rewards. Right. Because, like, one of the things is, like, you'll play Pack and Pal for a while, and then it's like, oh, you could take, now you can get the machine, and you can put another Pack and Pal machine in the arcade. And it's like, I can already play, it doesn't matter. Why didn't they ha do, like, what Nintendo did with HD Remix, where there was, like, challenges Now, and that would shit. be fucking awesome. That would have been there's better. Your, there's your idea. That's better than what I'm even going to say. Okay. I like that idea. is really good. But what I was going to say was, um, so... Instead of having unlockables to where, like, okay, you pay, play Pac-Man and you get 50,000 points and then it unlocks another – it unlocks a flag that you can put on the wall with Pac-Man on it. Instead of shit like that, how about – I know that they can't put Junior Pac-Man on here. I get it. You can't pay at right. games, that whole thing. But they have other games. Here's some Namco games. Dig Dug. Legend of Valkyrie, Galaga, Food Fight, Tower of Dragua, Rally X, Dragon Spirit, Tekken, Pole Position, Dangerous Seed, Mappy, Sky Kid, Xevious, yeah. all these other Namco games. Now, I'm not telling. By the way, yeah, this product exists. You're talking about Arcade Archives? No, it's Pac Man's Pixel Party. It's an arcade machine that Namco sells today. But I'm talking about something for them to put on the Switch. Yeah. So well, but, but, well, but they have the ROM for right. Pixel Bar. Uh, the, so Pixel Party is the new one. Then like a couple years ago it was Pac-Man's Arcade Bash. Right. They literally make that. Right. Like this software exists. Right. Why don't they just release Pac-Man's Arcade Party or Pac-Man's Pixel Bash on Switch? Well, the, see, the idea here is to have like all the Pac-Man games like in one. Thing yeah. Well, what I'm saying play. is they have that. But it has like all and it, it has, has like that fucking pack and roll like pack and roll and pack moto. No, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. But it has the shit that you're mentioning, right? So, I mean, I guess you could also get that. Yeah. But I'm just saying. So what I wanted them to do would be like, okay, you're playing Super Pac Man and you get fifty thousand points. Then it unlocks Galaga, and then you can play the Galaga. Machine. Oh, that'd be cool. Because so the, they the, and then you could plop that into the arcade. Yeah, because they already they own this shit. Because it literally costs them nothing to put Galaga in this. Because they own it. So I get that they probably don't want to put every fucking game they ever made on it. That's me being like, it's just spoiled brat. Like, yeah. oh, but give me everything you ever made. I don't want them to do that. <laughs> but I do think they should make some high tier things. Like, okay, give me something to work towards. Like if. I'm playing Super Pac-Man. Make it that I, if I get 200,000 points and I, I sit there and I play over and over, that I'll unlock a uh, food fight. Or Tales something. of Symphonia. Like, let me <laughs> unlock something, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, and some people said like Tekken and stuff. I think it should, uh -huh. they, if they were going to do that, they should keep it to the old stuff. That By the way, like Galaga and when you start Tekken on PlayStation, what happens while the game is loading? I don't know. You have to tell me. Galga plays. Oh, yeah. There so it's go. loading. And you could play Galga. See? Isn't that cool? Because it's Namco. Yeah. Right. I always thought that was the coolest thing. There were times when I would play Tekken, not to play Tekken, but just to do the loading screen Galga. Yeah. Because it lets you right. keep playing. Just to play Galaga. Yeah, after yeah. it's already loaded, like if Galaga. you're still alive, you could keep playing. Yeah. But it's one coin. I'm not very good at it. I just play it and I just try to do the trick where you get the two ships and then I'm yeah. like, I'm good. I'm, I've never been very good at Galaga. Yeah. But... I mean, that's another thing. I could, they could do a Galaga collection, do Galaga and Ga what is it, Galpus and uh, Galaxian and yeah. do like all those, you know? That, I'm you way know? better at Galaxian than Galaga. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's hard, you know? It's hard. Then they have like a bunch of other ones. There's like, so there's one called Pac Man Arrangement on, on there, which is, uh, I guess it came out in Japan. It was like a Japanese arcade. But I was like, I've played that shit before and I was trying to figure out where I'd played it. And I found out, so it was on a Game Boy Advance collection called the Pac-Man collection. And I played it there years ago. And like, it's good, but it has continues. So it's like, 
again, it's the same thing like you were talking about with the Alien vs. Predator. It's like you just keep popping in the quarters yeah, and it's yeah. boring. So like if I want to play some of these games, it's like I got to I gotta limit myself, you know, yeah. and only do one credit so that it's interesting. Because I kept putting – I just kept hitting continue and I'm like there's, not, there's no challenge here because I can just keep continuing, yeah. you know, so – um, but that's a pretty that's a pretty cool game, and I like the graphics on it. All that said, uh, it might sound like I don't like this. I do think that this is very worth picking up. There's a lot of fun to be had here. Um, the emulation's very good, and it's got some of the later 3D stuff too it's that you don't see of, that often. Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend getting it. I think I think you should get it on a physical because, as you know, what are the chances that in a decade from now? you're going to be able to go onto the Nintendo Switch eShop and download this game. Zero. Fucking zero, right? Yeah. So if you own a physical of it and your Switch still works, then you'll be able to play it. Absolutely. Know, download it or whatever. Because I, I, 10 years later, I came back to the Xbox uh, Live Arcade, and I was like, oh, I have Miss Pac-Man and Simpsons because I downloaded it 10 years ago, but... You can't get it anymore, though. You probably ha probably haven't been able to get it for eight years or something. Right. You know, once they the license went out or whatever. Yeah. So all this shit, you know, I had thought for a while I was like, oh yeah, like Netflix is great and all and all this and you know uh, you know watch things on Disney Plus and all, all these things, but you know, as, as far as video games and movies go, I'm kind of I for what I'm trying to say is I was steering in the direction of like yeah, digital's fine, but then I was like oh yeah, but then they take it all away from you or they change things. Right. So it really is good to have the physicals, actually. Yeah, I mean, more and more I'm getting physical versions of games because I mean, look how long it took us to get Scott Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. Like that's a really good example of that. Yeah. You know. So so yeah, I mean. How much is this collection? What did you pay for that? I think it's nineteen ninety nine. Oh, that's not bad at all. I would say it's it's worth it. Like yeah. fucking just Pac Man alone. Like you could play Pac Man for the rest of your life, and if that's not enough, you get Super Pac Man. Those two things right there. Those are two classic games that you can play the rest of your whole fucking life. And then you get Pac Mania, Pac and Pal, Pac Arrangement. You know, Pac Man two five six. Which Pac Man two five six is probably my favorite of like all these. And which is interesting because it's like they made that game in the last like whatever eight years or something, and that the game's fantastic. And not included was Pac Man ninety nine, which you know what sucks about Pac Man ninety nine? That game's really good, but it's not gonna be around forever unless some kind of fan in the future like finds a way for people to like play it. But like once they take the servers down, you won't be able to play that game. Right. And so enjoy Pac Man ninety nine while it lasts, I guess. But yeah, but it's a fun game. Um, I, I do like that they're continuing to try to do things to keep Pac-Man alive and update Pac-Man. And sometimes they're successful and sometimes they're not. In the Super Nintendo era, they did like, they're like, oh, let's make Pac-Man uh, Tetris. And it's like that didn't Man, work. The Super, like, like Pac-Man was shit for a long time. It was. There's a big dark time. Yeah. But I think now with like the... Championship Edition yeah. brought it back. Pac-Man Battle Royale, which I don't think it's fun on this, but you play in an arcade with friend with three of your friends, very fun. Yeah. And then Pac-Man 256 is great. So I'm excited to see for what else they can come up with with Pac-Man and come out with something something cool. I think a, I this is a kind of off topic, but I think a Mario Kart 99 is possible. I was like thinking about like how they could make it work. Yeah. And, like I totally think it's like a possible thing. Imagine so, because the, the way like Tetris ninety nine works and and um, Pac Man ninety nine works is you have all the other ninety nine players on the side. So let's say you were playing Mario Kart, and you have all the other people on the side. Um, I feel like each race you would just be versus seven other real people. Like you couldn't have ninety nine people like all racing at the same time and be like too many. But you just get a batch of people, and then and then maybe when you go to the next race, like it swaps it out with another, you know, right. seven, but you still, but you're still seeing what's going on with the other 99 people. I don't know. I just feel like there's, what a, if there's a way. What if work. they're like ghosts? Maybe. Yeah. They could be ghosts. Yeah. Like on the track or something. Yeah. I definitely think it's possible. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's also thing about Mario Kart. Sorry, I'm going off topic on Mario Kart now, but like, I think it's fucking weird how that game came out on Wii U and there's still relationship for it. It's like now they're doing the tracks, which is really cool, but Fucking so when they announced the tracks, everybody's like, "Yo, that's fucking awesome, Mario yeah. Kart tracks!" And it is, it is awesome that we're getting more Mario Kart tracks. But it's like we're like applauding Nintendo for them releasing tracks late 
Right. Remember when we used to get a cartridge and the whole game was on the cartridge? Right. It's like, so this whole year of 2022, we're going to keep getting more tracks, which is great, but I feel like shouldn't we have gotten those tracks originally? And then also... What's the what's 2023 going to be? They're finally going to be like new battle mode, and then all 2023. Then they're going to be like, okay, so here's uh, now we're going to release uh, one battle mode arena, and then in May yeah. you get another battle. So mode it took arena. them like ten years to make this game or whatever. Yeah, they keep fucking releasing shit for it, and it's like, yo, remember when like I I went to fucking Toys R Us and I bought Super Mario Kart, and it was, guess what? It had battle mode. It had all that shit. It was there the whole yeah. fucking game. Popped it in, done. <laughs> Same thing on Nintendo 64. And now now yeah. they're like, fuck this shit. Let's keep charging these motherfuckers. Yeah. You want more tracks? Yeah, they want the only game you play to be Mario Kart. It's going to be Mario Kart 8 until we're fucking dead. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's, it. that's what I got for Pac-Man. Guys, thank you very much for watching. That's this week's episode of Talk About Games. We will be back next week. We do this show 8 o'clock every Eastern Standard Time. 8 o'clock on youtube check it out be here be here for the premieres if you're watching this later make sure you come watch it in the premieres leave a comment because it's good for the fucking algorithm so that somebody can watch feed the, the algorithm goddamn, feed the goddamn algorithm <laughs> leave a comment or don't go just go about your day and do whatever play pac-man go play pac-man or go play alien vs predator or what's an easy way for them to play that game that's me oh, i just downloaded it on meme um if you are using RetroArch, you got to use Mame two thousand three, because Mame the most recent Mame won't play it. So, what kind of collection could they do? What What would be that to have like this game released on the Switch? Would that that be Arcade Archives or like? <sighs> yeah, this could be like the Capcom archive that they could do, but it's licensed, so they won't. Right. Well, that's why they have to do some kind of like they they would have to do Alien and Alien vs Predator, and I'm trying to think of what else they'd include in some kind of package to be able to put this on the Switch. Yeah. So it's um, who did it? It's Capcom. It's Capcom. It's Capcom. So like, what would they put this with? So I mean, Capcom already has their arcade collection where they have all the DLC where you keep downloading arcade games. I wonder they if would, that's is they that would on just there? have to license it for that. The, oh, because they have to license it. I yeah, that, I mean, that's about it. That'd be a good thing for them to put out with the movie it's i'm saying that because like recently they did like the turtles yeah thing and that's like licensed so they have to get some kind of like license yeah and they and they already it. have the uh i forget what it's called capcom arcade whatever right where it has all the candy cabs and it has the leaderboards and it's they already have a thing they yeah. just need to license the it. arcade stadium thing yeah or, like, yeah capcom arcade stadium Capcom stadium yeah. yeah they just need to add it right yeah Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye. We are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. Like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment, and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys, so I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah.